This video is brought to you by Sporlin, quality, integrity, and tradition. Working on a glycol unit today, ran into an interesting problem. So this is a really old unit, I've told him to replace it, but regardless. Um, come up into here and I shut it off and look down into there, that's all ice. The refrigeration lines are completely encapsulated in ice. So we're gonna get the refractometer out and check the concentration of glycol. I suspect it's gonna be too much water. All right, so I'm using a refractometer and that is the glycol concentration level. You can see it's probably about 18 degrees is where it's set at. And that's not gonna be good because down in here is all frozen up. And so what's happening is this unit is getting colder than the, I'm sorry, the refrigerant uh, lines are getting too cold and the glycol is freezing. There's too much water in the glycol. So you can see it's all the way around. So that ice starts to act as an insulator, makes it struggle to bring the glycol temperature down and it just, you know, is a vicious circle. So this unit already struggles. As you can see, there's a box fan bringing air from outside because it's just an old R22 unit. We put a compressor back in it in 2017, but I bet you this unit's from 2004 probably. And it's just, just beat down, it really is. So. Unfortunately, um, this is something I'm gonna tell them to call the beverage company for. So I could mix glycol, right? Because glycol and water, you use the refractometer, you check it. But this is like the gray area where the beverage company does all the beer lines and everything. And if you don't get the concentration right, depending on the type of restaurant you're working in, it can really start to affect the pumps. Like if the glycol is mixed too thick, you can start overloading the pumps because they can't pump thick glycol very well. Uh, also what can happen is the heat transfer that happens in the beverage lines can be affected by the glycol concentration. If the system has like cobra head taps, uh, if you don't know what those are, Google search cobra head draft beer taps. They're actually really cool. But the glycol has to be mixed correctly. Now this restaurant doesn't have the cobra head taps, but the cobra head taps in my experience tend to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, depending on humidity and all that different stuff, it really starts to affect them. But in essence, Google search it, but what it is, is it's a beer tap in the shape of a cobra snake. And then when the ice builds up on the beer tap, it really it, it like exaggerates the cobra head shape. And it looks like you're dispensing the beer from a cobra head. It's really cool actually. But um, yeah, I'm going off on a tangent on that one. So yeah, in this situation, they're gonna have to call the beverage company. I don't think there's anything wrong with the refrigeration system. It did say 30 degrees when I got here. The last thing I'll do is I'm just gonna turn it off at the disconnect switch like I have it. I'll plug the pumps back in and we'll let the pumps recirculate the glycol. And uh, what I'll do is I'll tell them to call the beverage company right now. So that way when the beverage company gets here, all they gotta do is flip the disconnect switch on and the refrigeration will start again. So that's where we're gonna go on this. But the last thing I'm gonna do is just check the accuracy of the thermostat to the actual glycol temperature with another thermometer just to make sure that's good. And if that's good, then it's all the beverage company's problem. All right, so um, my thermometer says 29 degrees. Their thermometer says 30, so that's accurate. Now, the other thing too is that um, we, there's three pumps, okay? And we shut the pumps off and then we turned them on and I watched each pump turn on. So there's a return and a supply line for each pump. And we noticed that this middle one wasn't pumping. And uh, I, I was making a loud noise at the pump too, like really loud. And we're like, what the heck? And those are newer pumps too. What had actually happened, we were, I installed that in July. What actually happened, and, and I've never heard it make a noise like that. I looked over at the pump and all of a sudden, I, I turned off every other one except for that one and I left it running and all of a sudden I could hear it just buzzing and I stuck my hand in there. This big old goober of silicone came out. It was stuck inside the supply line. Actually, it was the return line. So it had sucked up like something from up here or something fell inside the glycol or silicone from here and it was stuck in there. And then uh, it popped and boom, then it starts flowing. So that's part of the problem too. But the, the glycol concentration's incorrect. And so what I'm gonna do is, like I said, leave this off. We're gonna leave the beer company a note and let them know how to turn it back on by literally flipping this on. We're gonna plug in all the pumps, which they actually are all running now. And then that way it's just gonna run and circulate the glycol and warm up. And then they can uh, they can change the glycol and then uh, um, 
then it should turn back on, you know, and all should be good, so. To me, this looks like a freaking two-year-old wrote this. It's horrible how bad my penmanship has gotten. Beverage dude, I was called on the glycol unit not working. When I arrived, there was an inch of ice on the refrigeration evaporator. I tested the glycol's concentration and the freeze point was 18 degrees Fahrenheit, which is too high. The glycol is also very dirty. I turned off the compressor at the disconnect switch. When you are done, turn it back on, please. Signed, refrigeration dude. And I'll uh, leave my cell phone number on here too. I just won't leave that for you guys. This was a short one. This was actually filmed sometime last year. But it's important to understand that the way that I do certain things is not necessarily the way that you're going to do things, okay? My company doesn't deal with glycol. I choose not to get involved in that. And the main reasons why I don't get involved with changing and adding glycol really is because it's a double-edged sword. Once you start going down that path, then the customer says, well, hey, you know, we have a glycol leak down here. And since you can add glycol, can you fix the leak? No, I don't deal with the beverage lines. Hey, um, we're not getting proper temperatures when the glycol lines run underground. Well, I'm not equipped to pull new glycol lines and that kind of stuff. So it's it's one of those areas uh, where it's always going to have two people involved. The, the, the beverage company, they deal with the taps. They deal with the pressure settings for the the you know the propellant gas or whatever they're using to push the the beer through the lines they deal with that i deal with the cooling the refrigeration right and so you just got to know when to say hey this isn't my problem you need to go ahead and get the other guys involved but in the situation of this i still have to have a basic understanding of what it is that they do and the basic understanding of what the glycol does you know um the idea is, is that the glycol allows the fluid temperature to get below freezing okay but in this situation it's still even though it was below freezing it wasn't letting it get low enough below freezing because you got to figure that the, the 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 temperature differential from the saturated refrigerant temperature to um the the, the fluid temperature is going to be pretty high probably 25 to 30 degree temperature differential um across or evaporator td or whatever you want to call it across that uh, the fluid to the refrigeration line. So they probably need to be getting their glycol temperature a little bit closer to zero for us to maintain, um, you know, a 26 degree box, right? Maybe not quite 30 degrees below it, but, you know, somewhere in the 20 to 25 range. And in this situation, their freeze point of the glycol, hopefully this makes sense to you, was not low enough, right? So there was too much water content in the glycol. But I mentioned before, you have to be careful because... Too much water content can start to affect other things, right? But then too much glycol can start to make the, the, the fluid a thicker concentration. So therefore, the pumps might struggle a little bit more to pump that fluid through, all right? Hopefully, that helps. Understanding how these systems, at least a general understanding of how they work, having a refractometer on site. And I don't have to, like, for me, for the work that I do, that's not a very expensive refractometer. might have cost 100 bucks or something, okay? There's very, very expensive refractometers that you can buy. Um, at least for what I do, I don't need to invest in a, a really, really expensive one because this does the trick and gets me close enough to where I can call in the beverage company and let them handle the rest and they come in. Um, now, I mentioned that this video was filmed a long time ago. Uh, you know, the one thing that bothers me about the, the beverage company oftentimes when they come in and, and, and I hate to throw them all into one bucket, okay, because I know there's got to be good ones out there too. But whenever I tell them that the glycol is dirty, they never do anything, at least the companies that I deal with, to clean up the glycol. Like, it's it's disgusting. I mean, that whole thing needs to be stripped. All that silicone needs to be taken off. The inside needs to be drained, cleaned, um, you know, but they don't. You know, the, the glycol is always nasty. And, and when I see contaminants and different things floating in the glycol, that can't be good for the lines, the buildup. You saw that the silicone was stuck in the the glycol line, you know, I mean, that's, it's just crazy. But anyways, you know, I just kind of stay in my lane and do what I know I'm kind of good at. And then I let other people handle the other stuff. Okay. I really appreciate you making it to the end of the video. I know this was a short one, but I thought it was a pretty cool one. Um, I was surprised that I could get the refractometer to focus on the camera lens. I mean, in reality, I was putting the end of the refractometer on one of those lenses and it was like, wow, it actually auto focused. That was pretty cool. So, uh, 
Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, leave me some feedback down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Please share these videos with your friends. You know, it does help for the channel to grow traction and to get attention if you guys share them and other people watch them too. So that would be really awesome um, if you guys can do that, okay? Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's a couple different methods you can do so. PayPal, Patreon, YouTube channel memberships. There's links in the show notes of the video. Uh, so on YouTube, just go down to the bottom. There's a description. Click the little triangle, upside down triangle tab, and then you'll see all the information. There's all kinds of information on how to contact me. Um, there's information uh, sometimes about my uh, my shipping address, um, important links that I think are important. So you definitely want to check those out. Um, the easiest way to support the channel is simply just watch the videos from beginning to end. That's the easiest way, okay? Also, if you're interested in purchasing any tools that you see me using in my videos, you definitely want to check out truetechtools.com. Uh, I have an affiliate link program set up with them. If you use my offer code upon checkout, big picture, one word, you get an 8% discount on majority of the items on their website. There's a few things it doesn't work on, but majority of the items. And then when you use that, it saves you money and I get a small commission from that and it helps me by you know helping the channel. So check it out. Again, big picture, one word. I really do appreciate you. Remember to be kind to one another and uh, we will catch you on the next one, okay?